have three females on exhibit in separate enclosures. Every year, two of the younger females build a mound, construct a mound, and lay eggs. We never see Dorothy displaying any of these behaviors. We thought that she was done, that she wasn't going to lay any more eggs. We haven't seen any eggs from her in several years. So whenever she laid the clutch of eggs, we were beyond excited. crocodiles are critically endangered and this particular female is from the wild. She's 55 years old and her uh, genes need to be passed on for the captive population to thrive. Typically the younger females in our collection will have a very impressive large mound and we know exactly where the eggs are in the exhibit. They are somewhere within that mound. With Dorothy, she didn't really build much of a mound. It wasn't like the other females. Once we isolated her from the exhibit and we went in, we searched the small mound first. We searched the entire mound and we found no eggs. Um, but we, we didn't want to give up. We were digging through the mulch and we came across the eggs. And it was a moment, I think we may have hugged, I'm not sure, but it was one of those moments like, oh yes, we found them. And at this moment, we're taking temperatures of the eggs. We're measuring the depth at which she laid these eggs and then we started removing the eggs one at a time, labeling them with pencil, numbering them, one through 26, which was shocking. We've had other females lay 22, 25, even 30 eggs, but we weren't expecting it from the old girl. For crocodilians, the sex of the offspring is determined by temperature. So we wanted to incubate the eggs at the specific temperature to produce males because the captive population has more females than males. We monitor these eggs very closely. At least twice a day we check temperatures of the incubators. Once a week we weighed the boxes that they were in. We candled the eggs, which is shining a light on the egg in a dark room to see hints of life. In the end, two hatched. Right now we know that there are approximately 4,000 uh, individuals left um, in, in one, if not two, locations um, in, in, in Cuba. So the habitat is shrinking. Um, the numbers are shrinking. The, the outlook for Cuban crocodiles is really, really grim. There are only a handful of zoos in North America that are trying to breed Cuban crocodiles as part of this uh, species survival plan. And it's very difficult to be successful. We don't see successful hatchings or even breedings every year. So we're really excited to be able to have successful hatching here at the National Zoo. We want the public to be able to come in and see these beautiful baby crocodiles, but also to kind of realize that, uh, that what they're looking at is the future of preserving this species um, in captivity and maybe even in the wild. I think it's something I'm going to tell the children I haven't had yet, and it's something I'm going to tell the grandchildren hopefully. Yes, we hatched a critically endangered crocodilian species from an, a female from the wild, a Cuban crocodile from the wild, and, and that's, it was a moment. <laughs>